Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today I'm gonna make a video talking about how to get and post data to Taplist IO's API using Home Assistant. This is really a part two to my DIY CAG monitoring video. And this is really just to build out more integrations with that DIY system into Taplist IO. I also have a video going over my DIY CAG monitoring video. So make sure to go in the description and check that video out if you haven't already. Also, if you're unfamiliar with Taplist IO, I also have a video on that. So again, the link will be in the description. More specifically, in this video, I'll be talking about how to push your keg volumes directly into Taplist IO so you can see a graphical representation of how much beer is left in the keg right in Taplist IO. Also, you can grab data from Taplist IO, like the name of the beer that's on tap, and you can integrate that beer name to notifications we already have set in Home Assistant. There's going to be a few things you're going to need to have before you can start working with this. The first thing is you're going to need a Taplist IO set up for your Taplist. Um, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a paid subscription through Taplist IO. Um, they have a hobby license. I have the plan selection here. You can pay $40 a year. Um, and you get a bunch of new features with Taplist IO. If you already do this, then you're all set. Uh, the big thing here is API access. Um, so you won't be able to access our API because they won't give you an authentication token unless you at least pay for the hobby. The last thing you'll need is you're gonna need to have the CAG DIY CAG monitoring system set up. So if you haven't already, check out that video I made. It's about a 40 minute video going through the setup and configuration of Home Assistant and the Wi-Fi skills that we build ourselves. There's gonna be two pieces of information you're gonna need before we can get started. You're gonna need your Taplist ID and then you're gonna need your authentication token. So if you go to Taplist IO, so if you go to Accounts, Integrations, API, you can create a key. Um, the, if you already have created a key, you're gonna see some key IDs here. This is not the authentication token. The only way to view the authentication token is you have to create a new key, and then there's gonna be the actual token right here, and you're only gonna see this uh, one time. When you hit done, this token's never gonna be shown again. Um, so create a new token, copy this token, and put it in a notepad somewhere. If you look under your brewery name, you'll see the Taplist ID right here in the URL. Go ahead and grab that information and throw it in a notepad as well. Once you have those two pieces of information, we can go ahead and start getting the code snippets. If you check the description of the video, there's gonna be a document there with some code snippets, uh, three main pieces. The first is going to be setting up a new MQTT sensor for your keg to display um, the volume in milliliters. So go ahead and grab that and make sure to throw it under the sensor. To quickly go over this, we're just doing, uh, we're just taking an MQTT data. We're naming it keg one milliliters. The state topic will be your uh, MQTT topic. So if you remember, we set this up with Tasmoda. If you check your, uh, your keg set a sensor here, it's going to be this uh, MQTT line here, and the capitalization again makes a difference. So Tele CAG1 sensor. Um, so it's going to be listening to Tele CAG1 sensor. And then the value template is the logic we're running on the value that we're getting via MQTT from the load cells. So this is taking the raw weight and then tarring the scale and then rounding it by one. And then ABS is turning the what would be a negative number into a positive number. The second snippet of code you're going to need is you're going to need the volume push rest command. So go ahead and check that document and you're going to check look for the rest command here. And for mine, I have three rest commands because I have three kegs. Uh, to quickly go over this, just so you know how to edit this. Um, it's a rest command. So you're not putting this under your sensors. This is going to be a totally separate section. And then we're naming this rest command. So it's going to be keg one update. The URL is going to be the URL that I provide you. This is the tapless IO API URL. The only thing you're going to want to change is for the tapless IO hyphen XXXX. You're going to replace this with your venue name. So go ahead and check your notepad out. 
and grab it and throw it here. Another thing you're gonna wanna check is for this specific rest command, this is updating your keg one, this is updating keg two, and this is updating keg three. And this is updating whatever current keg is attached to keg one. So for example, for keg one, it's my dry Irish stout. So this rest command would be updating my dry Irish stout. Next is the method, it's just patch. For the headers, we have the authorization token. So you're just gonna take this and just update this here, this secret, with your secret. So again, check your notepad out. If you don't already have a token, make sure to generate one from taplist IO and paste it in here. Next is the payload. And this is the data we're sending to taplist IO's API for keg one. Um, so the only thing you need to update here is this section here. So you'll see that the served volume in milliliters, this is the value we're updating in Taplist IOS API. And we're replacing the value of this parameter with this value. And this value is getting pulled from your sensors keg one milliliters. And that's that first code snippet we talked about. It's this section right here. So it's just taking this raw one value and the logic you run on it, it's gonna take that value in milliliters and it's gonna update the served volume in milliliters with that value. And then next we need to include the content type, which is application JSON. And then you have the char set as well. You can copy and paste this with however many kegs you have set up. So I have three kegs here, as you'll see. The only thing you need to change here is obviously you need to add new sensors for milliliters for all your kegs, like we did for the code, first code snippet. And then you wanna update the taps to correspond with the tap set up in taplist IO. The third and last code snippet you need to grab from the document in the description, the code snippet that pulls the keg beverage name. So you'll see I have three kegs again set up for here. Now to go over this in more detail, you're putting this under sensors. So make sure that you take this code snippet similarly to your milliliters, that first code snippet you put under sensors, you're also gonna put this under sensors. So you're set up, setting up a rest sensor. You're gonna name it whatever you'd like. I named mine keg one pull. The resource is the API again. You're replacing the taplist io xxxx with your taplist io ID. It's a get method, because we're getting information from this API. We have to add the header authorization token similarly to when we're patching data. We also need to use authentication to get data as well. Next, we need to add a value template. And this is the logic we're running on this API call. We need to parse this data because this returns a ton of data and we're only interested in one specific section. We're only interested in the name of the beverage of the current keg. So this is gonna take all this data and parse it for this specific field. And then force update is set to true. And you're gonna do this for all the amount of kegs you have. So again, I have three kegs. So I have this set up here. And this is gonna pull the beverage name from your taplist IO. Once you have all of this set up, now we need to change some things in our automation. Before we jump into automation, make sure to restart the Home Assistant server by going to configurations, settings, and then restart the server here. If you hit restart and there's an error that pops up, that means that there's an error in the code uh, in, the, in the Studio Code server. So double check the code snippets that you copy and pasted from the Word doc. You probably have something th that you've missed or you did not put the, uh, the code snippets in the right places. If you go to configurations, automation, we're gonna modify and add a few new automation things here. If you remember, we set up two automations for Home Assistant. One is to notify us when the volume of the keg is under one gallon. And then the other one we set up was a pour notification. We're gonna add a third and we're gonna call it whatever you'd like. I'm calling mine keg one tap list push. If you go here and create a new one, you can name it keg one tap list push. So when you go here, select time pattern and then do slash five. This means it's gonna run every five minutes. If you'd like to run this uh, every 10 minutes or every hour, feel free. 
In the Tablist IO documentation, it recommends uh, that you only send data every five minutes. Next, if we scroll down to actions, we need to call a service. So click on this drop down action type, click call service. In the drop down, you want to choose the RESTful command. I named my RESTful command keg one update. So you can go ahead and select that and then hit save. So that what this is doing is when this runs every five minutes, it's calling this RESTful command keg one update. And if you look back in your studio code server under volume push, it's keg one update. So it's that specific automation is running this section of code. Lastly, we have to just update the two notifications we set up in the DIY keg monitoring system. And we can edit these to just utilize the get request where we set up in the studio code server to get the name of whatever beer is on tap. So for example, for our keg one pour notifications, we can go ahead and edit this. And all you should need to do is if you go down here uh, under actions, you simply just have to add this state here. So for example, when we set up the sensor, this is the, um, the third code snippet we set up in the studio code server, the keg one pole. And this will just take whatever value that this has. And remember we're, we made a git request to Taplist IOS API, and then we parse it for whatever keg name is in that API. So this will just say, you just poured whatever beer is on your first tap. It will display the amount of ounces. Similarly though, how it was set up in the first video. Make sure to save. And then you can also go back to the homepage and then run actions. This will test it to make sure it's working. The other thing you can update is the keg one, uh, the gallon notification. So if we go to edit here, we can scroll down and we can just paste this state again in the message. If you're not seeing the edit in YAML, just paste this in the message and it will convert to YAML. So now this will just pull whatever data is from this keg one pull. And then it will say has one less than one gallon left. But that about covers it. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions about um, any of the code snippets or setting up the automation, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.